Welcome to Billy Customizes Stuff. I'm working on the name still. Paint stuff, whatever. But today we're going to be looking at the Deluxe Goblin Legion Builder from the Deluxe Builder Wave from the Four Horsemen for Mythic Legions. Now, it doesn't have a lot of paint on there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down into all its little bits. And I'm going to go over a technique for doing rust. Now, with rust, there are as many techniques for doing rust as there are, I don't know, uh, plants in the solar system. Uh, but I'm going to go over one. And we're going to see how it turns out. And we're going to hope for the best. And if it works out, maybe I'll try a different one. Uh, this one's going to be pretty, pretty basic. Not too crazy. Not too labor intensive. And uh, everyone should be able to follow along. Um, I'm going to switch camera views. Mainly I'm just going to show painting the torso and doing the different kind of layers of paint to that. And uh, maybe some of the other pieces in a more speedy uh, version. More of the little detail work on other stuff and uh, head and stuff. So I'm going to take a break, break this down, and come back. So I've taken and I made a mixture right here of... Apple Barrel Jack-O-Lantern, because the only main orange I have, and a little bit of Vallejo Mahogany Brown to a desired rustish color there. And I got several other ones picked out here. I have a Brown Oxide next, uh, then a, what is this, a Terracotta after that, and then a Pewter, brown, uh, pewter Gray right there. Um... I don't need to base coat this because everything painted on here has, from the factory, already a, a good base coat. So I've thinned my paint. I've mixed my mixture. Um, I probably could be using a bigger brush, but I'm going to put this on thin. I might do two layers on this, but it's going to go on there, and it'll be the base coat for my rust. doesn't have to be perfect. It's odd painting with a, a camera right here. I'm so used to uh, not having to do that. Maybe I could look at the viewfinder easier. No, it is it is awkward. This is awkward, but, you know, eh. I don't care. So I just try to cover it all. Sometimes. Ain't gotta be perfect, just gotta be covered in orange. And my main goal is to end up not looking like Gonks, because here is, here is Gonks. Gonks has where he's his own type of rusty bastard, and I'm trying to not look like Gonks, for one. Uh, I love Gonks. And he needs a, a rusty sidekick here, but uh, he does not need a copycat. Um, also, during this, I'm going to try to work around the joints. I want the joints to stay the same color they are right now. Uh, the idea will be like, hey, he's working around. He doesn't need uh, rust on those joints because he's actually doing what he's supposed to. Uh, be a good soldier in the... Army Arthur. Yeah. Nice and gross looking. Okay, I'm going to hit this with a heat gun and do another coat. And then we'll move on to the next section of this tutorial. Have the base coat on there. And it's nice and dry. And I have to pick which color I want to use to do some dabbing on there. Um, with this, I'm going to create like a, a very fleck look of rust on there. So I took a piece of foam and I roughed it up. And I think mm, I'm going to go with the terracotta first. Do a little terracotta there. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to try to get it. There we go. A little bit less on there and just apply it randomly 
not too heavily. Just try to have it where it's it's just it's varied looking, you know. So it's just a little different. Not too crazy. I really want it on there because the paint was cool looking there. Yeah. There you go. Just as long as it's different. A little bit more. Uh, hmm. Like on the shoulder area and downward. Yeah. The sticky text kind of moving, but yeah, you can see how that worked right there. This is a little different. Okay, next I'm going to get a different kind of color to it. I'm going to go for this and apply it a little bit more heavier, but not by too much there. there. Dab, 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 dab. I swear I won't say dab all the time on this, but I'm debating on it. But the thing is, we just want it not uniform. We want it to look different. Getting that neck a little bit more. Er, yeah. There we go. I think that's pretty ununiform looking. Now I'm going to pick, well, I picked a uh, the pewter gray. And that's to contrast the like the main base coat of orange. To have where, like, uh, it's the paint that originally was or color originally was before everything kind of, you know, started rusting out and everything. Um, this one I'm not going to try to thin too much at all. It'll help with the very texture of it of rust and uh, I'll just apply it in some areas, big spots, little spots, stuff like that. And it'll have where it kind of adds to it. So let's go with that. So I'll move around here. Just kind of pick different areas varied. And if it peeks through, it's fine. I mean, like it's, it's the original paint. Rust happens. You just gotta, gotta think about that. If I pull a little down, there we go. Trying to be aware of the camera, but also be able to see in pain is a is a trick. It definitely is a trick there, but. Uh, I think if, if you guys like this, I, I might try to keep doing paint tutorials because also uh, when I pulled out my wet palette today, I had not used it since November of last year when I did a custom for Legion's Con. Um, and uh, I'll tell you what, uh, the paint, the paint was still wet. Uh, it started to grow other things, but the paint, the paint was still wet. So... If you don't have a wet palette, I suggest picking one up because at least you'll be able to keep the paints, keep a record of uh, what you were working with, what you were mixing, even, even. Uh, that's what I, I really like about it. Um, it helps me because like, I mean, you could, you can eyeball some colors and stuff and it's, you can get a pretty good, you know, idea. You remember what you're doing somewhat, but, uh, ugh. Some of those paint mixtures, you kind of, it's a, it's a one-time go, like making flesh for something, like orc flesh or uh, human flesh for that matter. Uh, some of that, oof, some of that's happening one time and I'm like, oh, now it's has where it's a little bit too orange. But, yeah, yeah, just, just spilling in space while I paint. There, what that painted do? 
uh, I don't know if you can hear that on the uh, the camera there, but uh, Gamera has where he is. He is whining right now. Oh, mighty. Oh, the joy of having pets. Joy of having pets, guys. Joy of having pets. Yeah. I already fed you today. Chill out. Get treats later. Yeah, just no rhyme or reason. Just picking different spots to paint. Yeah. And I won't have to go over and do any more extra stuff with it. Because. It's weird. Rust is weird. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to finish this up some, dry it, and then we'll move on to the next step. So now this is with all the, uh, the, the paint aspect of the armor dried. I made some wash out of uh, uh, Folk Art Thicket Busquet. Bouquet. It's not bouquet. Busquet. Busquet. We're not going to be here all day doing that. Um, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to apply it over it to try to get into the recesses and stuff. And hopefully I don't spill this. Ugh. I mean, I took these containers from Walmart and they work pretty good. But, eh. but I'm going to try to get into all the little nooks and crannies some on here. Kind of add definition, try to pull it in all the areas. Kind of add to that. Um, you can go back over a lot of the other stuff, like the paint, the paint panels, and add definition to those too. But it's just a wash, just layering it up kind of varies a lot of stuff up. You don't want to like completely coat it everywhere. But you do want to get like the nooks and crannies. Because it'll make your rust look even more realistic and fun. And it's all about fun, guys. It's really coming together. But yeah, I try to go in for all that detail. And it'll add and really make your character pop. Bleh. Bleh, bleh, bleh. Okay. Right. I'm going to hit this with the heat gun again, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now I'm going to take some Vallejo Thinner Medium. Um, it's not the same as water. See, it says acrylic resin on there. And mix it with a little bit of the uh, terracotta. And I'll apply that randomly on the torso. So I'm going to put my Thinner Medium right here. Oh. Thinner Medium. There we go. But, uh, yeah, it, it's not like water. It has where it's, like, slightly different. Scoop. Scoopy-doop. I have definitely put not enough in there. Come on. There we go. Or I've put too much. 
one of the four. Oh, let's see here, because I don't want it to be real thick, but I want it to have where it has an appearance. There we go. And I'm just going to dab this randomly on there once I finally get it mixed, just the way I want it to. I should have done this equal parts, but, uh, yeah. Who am I to do things the right way? Okay. Frame, frame, good. Get that in there some. Um, I try to keep it off of all the, the, the paint spots of the, the armor paint spots I've made, where it's like this is the original color. Uh, some, it could touch the edges and everything, but it has where it just kind of adds to the rust look some doesn't have to be a hundred percent coverage on this either the varied look the varied rust look is what we want and that's what we're going for and i think we're gonna achieve it with this uh there we go all right i think the the next thing after this should be the next to last step. And the next step is going to be fun. I need you to get your crappiest brush. Frayed, done that. This is my favorite brush because it's uh, I've used the most and uh, it it hasn't fallen apart. But we're gonna take it, let that take it. I'm gonna take the plain jack-o'-lantern and I'm gonna put a little bit on the end of my brush and then you're gonna take a finger and at different spaces, just. Flick it some. I guess one there more, a little bit more on there. Take it and just flick it. Doesn't matter how far away. Doesn't matter if you get it on the paint spots. Just want to add to that, like different, varied rust on there. And oh yeah, I am probably getting this on my phone. Who cares? Get over there, 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 there. different distances, different levels of spray. Oh man, I need more coffee. Blech. Blech. Little more. I don't feel like, yeah, there we go. Yeah, love it, I love it. All right. Uh. And you just try and take a finger and mess with them some. Don't want them perfect. Nothing perfect about this paint job. And it'll just, it'll, oh God, it's, it's really coming together. Mm. Okay, let's see if it'll focus in on there. Ooh, bumped it. Yeah, that's looking great. Uh, next, we're gonna do a little edge highlighting on. All right, now I'm gonna add some edge highlighting to focus. Edge highlighting on the areas where like, you know, armor would rub and stuff like that. Probably around the, the arms, a little bit around the neck, edges right there. Uh, maybe in the bottom some, uh, just 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 on the edges, not in the big vast areas. Edges. Uh, you need a fairly uh, thin paintbrush for this, and just gonna take that and just put more paint on my brush and not try to rub it off so much. Just kind of. Get along there some, around here some. Oh, I'm using a uh, Vallejo uh, was it? Oh, sh Chainmail Silver. It has where it matches a lot to most of the Mythic Legion Silvers, it seems like anyway. Again, doesn't have to be perfect because we got 
one more step after this. But every little bit of this paint layering up and everything has added to our realism detail of this rust. Um, I hope this has helped you some. It's been a, a great chance for me to actually get back into painting some. Because it has been forever, guys. For ever. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to finish this up and then I'll come back to the next step. Okay, uh, after drying that, you can see all the little scuffs and stuff like that. But the final step, you're going to need a pencil for or some graphite powder or take the pencil, uh, rub it on a piece of paper to make your little spots. But you could take, get it on there. It's on there a little bit, but you want to rub it on all the areas you painted to kind of mute the color down some. Or you could take the pencil. <clears throat> of course, I hit bump. And just rub it on there. You know, kind of mute it down. Don't do it so hard you're trying to scrape the paint off. But it'll kind of bring that. <gasps> oh, I need a half size pencil. But yeah, it'll have where it brings that down. Be a little bit less shiny but still have that look that it's been worn and worn down. Uh, you may just want to pick up some graphite powder, uh, but the pencil's doing pretty good. Yeah. Just taking that sheen off there a little bit, but still keeping it. And after, after this, you want to continue with all the other parts of the uh, character and the armor. And I'll take the rest of my day to finish the rest of this, and I'll do a uh, turnaround and some photography with it. And, uh, yeah, it's been fun doing this with y'all. Uh, I hope you've learned something. Um, there's still uh, at least half a dozen other techniques for doing rust. Uh, some involve, oh, God, certain powders and things like that to add little, like, glops and stuff like that that have where they, they stay on your stuff. Uh, I'm somewhat interested in doing some of those other techniques or just trying to do them all together. But like this one, this one's like a good, good one that I like using. Um, obviously you can use different paints, different colors, different base coats, Whatever works for you, whatever you want to, it's just the fact of, like, the technique is what you need to remember. Um, experiment around. Uh, one good way to set stuff up like this, uh, take, you could take an old uh, milk jug, cut that up, and cut into little panels, and you can use that to practice on. That's a good cheap way to do that. Um, just anything you want to do, practice on another figure. But it works for you. But uh, I'm going to say uh, bye for now. And like, share, subscribe. Uh, if this helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Because, uh, yeah, I want to keep doing stuff like this. And uh, keep growing the channel. Um, have a good day, guys. Bye.